Mr. Burdell Williams will provide yep. the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, followed by the statement and acknowledgement um, of Indigenous and diverse communities. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for the statement of statement of acknowledgement and honor of indigenous and diverse communities. We begin this meeting with acknowledgement of and honor for the many legacies that have impacted our community, particularly those buried over time. Acknowledging truth is crucial, critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. Sheltonham Township stands with the Lenapahinic, the ancestral home, homeland of the Lenny Lenape civilization. Their people were and still are caretakers of this land and its rivers and their legacy continues. We pay respect to their elders past and present. Our community owes, us, owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will. Some were drawn to leave their distance home, distant homes in hope of a better life. And some have lived on this land for more generations than can be counted. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together and as a school district committed to equity and social justice that fosters intellectual curiosity and discourse, join us in uncovering such truths. Thank you, Mr. Burdell Williams. Mr. Swiker will pro uh, provide or conduct a roll call for the board. Thank you, Pam. Ms. Blitzstein? Present. Mr. Burdo Williams? Present. Mr. Epps? Present. Ms. Henry? Present. Ms. Lohman? Present. Ms. Mulhern? Present. Ms. Murphy? Present. Mr. Schultz? Present. Dr. Whiting? Present. Thank you, Mr. Swiger. Next, we have our student council report. I believe Mr. Uh, Cooker is in. Yes, the... I'm. Okay, you're there. Hi, Shalom. How are you? Uh, hello. Um, <clears throat> it. Uh, so, uh, for our notes from our uh, last meeting, um, we will be electing new class representatives uh, sometime in January for the upcoming semester. Um, in the early stage of planning for a thrift sale at the school on March 2nd, uh, where, and the money from the sale will be going to a sustainable nonprofit. We are starting to plan for a spring fling dance in April, and junior and senior classes are now selling prom tickets. The junior prom is May 4th at Arcadia Castle, and senior prom is, is uh, May 23rd at Camden Aquarium. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Diazio will provide the solicitor's report. Good evening. Uh, the board has not met an executive session since uh, the last board meeting, so there is no Sunshine Act announcement for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diazio. So now I uh, need a motion to approve the minutes from the December 4th, 12th, and 19th. Uh, legislative meetings. So moved, Jennifer Lohman. Second, Mia Blitzstein. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So the minutes have been approved. We have recognitions from Elkins Park School. So thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, I don't believe Dr. Clark is on. Can you confirm? I can confirm. 
she's not on. I was I just looked in the room also. Okay, thank you. So you will be here next Tuesday if we don't have uh, any unforeseen uh, variables. Uh, really need you to take a look at the auditorium and the work um, that uh, the art teachers have displayed uh, of students at EP. Um, it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, and I simply wanted to um, acknowledge that. As you know, a lot of our principals are kind of being uh, innovative uh, with their technical skills and, and kind of doing videos uh, to highlight uh, the fantastic things that are happening uh, at their respective schools. Mr. Kaufman, do you have access to the video for uh, Elkins Park? Yes, sir. Could you please uh, play that uh, for the board and those uh, who are joining us from the community? <laughs> Yeah. 
So believe it or not, all those activities are, are from this year alone. Um, I'm working with a group at EP who's part of my uh, student um, superintendent advisory council. Uh, we recognize this is all about continuous improvement. The one thing that I, I will say uh, is that when you uh, talk about the climate and culture um, just in a year from where we were last year, um, to where we are this year, we've, we've seen some um, significant growth. And as we've been making incre incremental gains in student outcomes, we hope to see that transferred uh, as we move forward in this year. I'll, I'll own um, Dr. Clark not being here. You know, she never misses an opportunity um, to showcase uh, what's happening at Elkins Park and the work that they're doing. Um, but I think the video um, definitely uh, really spoke volumes uh, around what they're trying to create there uh, at that program. So uh, thank you for that, Mr. Kaufman. And Madam Chair, if I could take point of privilege, I do believe I'm next. You uh, are. Thank you so much, ma'am. So if we can uh, tee up our superintendent's uh, report. And you can go to the next slide. I'm so, sorry for the videos, guys, but uh, it's part of what we do now. And this is uh, just a video to really celebrate each and every one of you. As I alluded to earlier, uh, this is uh, just the appreciation month for our board of directors. Uh, we definitely appreciate you. Uh, the tireless hours that you uh, put forth. And not only do I appreciate you in central office, but you're going to hear some others that appreciate you as well. Uh, so you can hit play, sir. Happy New Year to our Board of School Directors. It is such an honor, especially as the newest principal to the group, to have an opportunity to be part of this compilation, thanking you for everything that you do. One of the strategies I use throughout the day is looking at quotes throughout my office, and over um, one of them over here says, blessed, and we are so blessed to have your time, your love, your expertise as part of the board that does so many wonderful things for our students from kindergarten to 12th grade. We know that you love what you do to create beautiful lives for our students, or you would never give the time and the passion that you do. Thank you so much for everything that you do for us as a district, and it is an honor to know you and to work with you. Greetings to the school board of Sheltonham School District. I just want to take a moment to say thank you for all of your hard work. I know that you spend many hours um, laboring over the decisions and making sure that we have equity and academic um, excellence in our school district. And I'm just so thankful and have such gratitude to be able to be a school leader in a district with such a fantastic board. I'm wishing you all the best, and I look forward to continuing to work with you on our collective goal of excellence in Sheltonham. Thank you, school board. Hello, board members. I would like to say thank you for your hard work and your dedication to our students, staff, and to the Myers community. Uh, I really appreciate everything that you do to ensure the growth and well being of our students as they enter school in kindergarten until they leave in 12th grade. Thank you on behalf of the Myers staff, students, and community, and you are appreciated for your diligence and dedication to our community. Three. Yeah.
My great hero, Fred Rogers, once said that every person who touches the life of a child is a true hero. Thank you for being my heroes. Thank you for giving up countless Tuesday nights, Monday nights, Wednesday nights, and Thursday nights as well in support of the mission of the Cheltenham School District, in support of our faculty, our staff, our students, and our families. Your work is noticed and appreciated. Thanks for being our heroes. We appreciate you. With kindness and more. So to our board of school directors, happy school board recognition month. And thank you for all the attention that you've given to all of the staff and students in the Cheltenham School District. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for all of those hours that you spend in all of those meetings. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your energy and your ideas. We appreciate it and it doesn't go unnoticed. So thank you very much. Great. We just want to say thank you, school board. Hey, I just want to take this time to thank our school board for all that they do. Um, they are elected officials and represent our entire school community. You guys keep the lights on, um, you keep things going on within our school as far as activities and events, and we couldn't do this um, at all. So thank you for all the hard work and time that you put in away from your families. We appreciate you. Because nothing in this district could happen without you. Thank you, school board. Thank you, school board. We appreciate everything you do. Great. Thank, thank you, school board, for everything. Thank you, school board directors. We are very appreciative of all that you do to provide a wide range of opportunities for our students, both inside and outside the classroom. Happy School Board Recognition Month. Thank you, board of directors. Merci. Gracias, Consejo Escolar. Thank you for going on the school board, running, helping, and doing everything you can for helping the schools. Thank you, Mom, so much for serving on the school board, for making the schools a better place. I've seen all your hard work. I've seen your dedication. Uh, thank you for just making this world so much better. Thank you, Dad, for everything that you do. I appreciate you so much and everything that you do for my school and all the other schools in our district. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Charles Waddell Williams, for all your time and effort on the school board. Thank you for your time on the school board. Keep up the good work. Hi, Mom. Um, thank you for all the hard work that you do on the school board. We all notice it. I especially notice it. Uh, you're always out Tuesday nights working at the school board, especially with your job. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Mom, for all of your hard work on the school board. I appreciate you. Thank you for all of your hard work and dedication on the school board. Thanks, Mom, for serving on the school board. Thank you for serving at the school board and helping and spending your time helping with the school. We appreciate it. Thank you for running for school board and helping our schools. Thank you. So thank you, guys. Um, you know, that that kind of sums it up, right? Um, the why, um, we all do what we do. And uh, I, I hope that you felt the um, sincerity uh, behind those thank yous. And uh, I really want to thank uh, Mr. Kaufman and Ricky for uh, getting your children too. I mean, we missed that last year. So every year, continuous improvement. We try to do an upgrade. Um, and this was just uh, an opportunity to kind of seize the moment. So uh, that was heartfelt. I hope you received it. Um, so kudos uh, to you guys. Appreciate all you do. That's why I wish you were here. It's hard virtual, but um, we did the best that we could do under the circumstances. So. Um, we celebrate all of you. Uh, next report or next slide, please.
and you can go to the next slide. So I'm, I'm going to kind of take you down memory lane, just really, really uh, brief. Two years ago, and that would have been 21, 22, um, was the first opportunity that, that I had to uh, stand uh, before all of our faculty and staff uh, holistically as a district during our kickoff. And the one thing I talked about, which was in a previous slide, was that team CSD, uh, which means so much. Um, here you see the importance of teamwork. And it speaks for itself. The secret makes common people achieve uncommon results. That's something that we're striving uh, definitely towards. And I'm seizing this opportunity because Nothing that we're doing in leadership is not intentional, very purposeful. Uh, and the one thing that I mentioned, a couple things, were one, with really amping up the data, it's that whole premise that data is a flashlight, not a hammer. And you guys as a board have heard me say this numerous times that regardless of what strategy, you try to implement if the culture, the climate, if the mindset is where it's not where it needs to be, then those strategies, those uh, initiatives are not going to move forward. Next slide. Empathy. You've seen this in my letters, my communications. You know, this means a lot to me as a leader. And it's something that I feel means a lot to Sheltonham School District as a community at large, the uh, importance of withholding judgment, knowing the story behind every child, uh, and just, I'm gonna read that, communicating that incredible healing message of you're not alone. Uh, that student having a trusted adult just goes so far um, for me uh, was a missed opportunity in my journey uh, as a student. And it's something I really strive for for our students uh, currently. Next slide. Accountable versus accountability. And, and you can see the difference here uh, in this slide. We are really trying to have individuals be um, reflective uh, invested in their journey. Um, I'm not trying to take the approach of accountability, which simply means compliance. I'm really trying to take the approach of everyone uh, wanting to be accountable for their role and their responsibilities within the district. Next slide. Mindset, don't even need to reiterate that. You've heard uh, the importance of what that mindset is when we really talk about that growth mindset versus that deficit thinking mindset. Next slide, please. I introduced this two years ago when we just really talked about plan, do, study, act, and how important it is um, to have a process in which we work through the steps of continuous improvement. Um, two years ago, this was a concept, a well-known concept, but not one that I saw systemically happening throughout the district. Next slide. And just here, when you break it down further, uh, and look at plan, the teaching and learning, the assessment, the importance of data review and analysis, and also school improvement the plans, the, the actual action um, is so important. And we talk about um, that the planning, it, it's the journey that we are currently going through. And you'll see that as we continue to evolve and as I continue uh, to move through uh, this presentation. Next slide. <clears throat> this past year, 22-23, when we opened, or actually that would have been 23, 24. Okay, that was this summer. Uh, I really 
try to put things in a framework around what it is that we do. So when we talk about the different criterions that we're trying to focus on, uh, I shared with faculty and staff about criterion one, uh, the focus on student learning, uh, dynamic and distributive leadership, uh, and sustained improvement. You know, my whole thing with really pushing these standard operating procedures, it's all about sustainability, regardless of who's sitting in my seat or other seats uh, throughout the district. The criterion two around quali quality teaching uh, and learning support, the quality of instruction in the classrooms, um, coordinated and aligned curriculum and assessment, um, coordinated and job embedded professional development. You know, this is something that uh, Dr. Smith and her team in the Office of Ed have really taken on a uh, head on in terms of moving uh, PD uh, and also trying to amp up with our school-based principals and leadership, the importance of doing those informal uh, informal observations to make sure that there's a check and balance to the PD, to the initiatives that is being transferred uh, in the classrooms to our students. Criteria three, system-wide improvement is around effective use of data, strategic allocation of resources, uh, policy and program coherence. That's our strategic plan um, and the budgeting process and making sure that those are aligned in terms of um, making sure that all our arrows are pointed the right direction so that we can get the desired result that we're looking for. And criteria four, clear and collaborative relationships. So when we talk about the PLCs, um, when we talk about everyone understanding what their role is and what that cross intersectionality looks like uh, and really engaging the community and managing the external environment. You know, for first time under my tenure, we're putting out uh, a survey to faculty and staff, which is really a perceptual survey when we're seeking their voice on what's working and to be quite honestly, what things that we can do better. Uh, next slide. You guys will, are, have seen this multiple times when we talk about multiple measures. I showed this two years ago. Again, this was just a concept. Next slide. This past year, I talked about the importance of every faculty and staff member being uh, a change agent and that it's our moral purpose um, to embrace that responsibility within what we do each and every day. Next slide. And then we broke it down into the four cores when I met with uh, individuals on our, our kickoff and we talked about the personal vision building, inquiry, mastery, and collaboration. Um, these are things which I try um, to model as a district leader. And these are the expectations that I wanna see transcended uh, as we go down throughout uh, our, our system and our district as a whole, uh, from principal to department leads, to teachers, uh, to our custodians, our maintenance, our bus, it doesn't matter. Everyone um, plays a role in terms of owning this and being a change agent. I'm trying to build folks capacity um, and being vested and having ownership in the process. Next slide. So when I talk about that, um, everyone having ownership, everyone being vested, everyone having a voice, this is just high level overview of our school improvement journey thus far this year. Uh, we have introduced to our buildings uh, multiple measures. They've, they've looked at perceptual data. They've looked at, they've looked at demographic data. They've looked at um, student outcome uh, data. Uh, and they are sitting at the table having those hard conversations in terms of identifying where we are uh, and where we need to go. Next slide unpacks it even a little further. Um, systemic, not in silos. Uh, don't 
squint your eyes, Ms. Sloman, trying to look at this. I'll, I'll, you know, blow this up for you guys where you can see it. I just want you to understand the work right now that we're doing. I took you back two years when this was just a concept to where we are right now, where everyone has uh, ownership and a voice in the process. Next slide. You know, when I know it says aggregate and we are looking at data in the aggregate, but as you guys know, we're also looking at it in the disaggregate as we are focused on the gaps and we are interested on what our various um, student groups are, are doing. Uh, faculty and staff are really identifying what are their core values and beliefs as, as a school, as a, as, a, as a team, as a unit. Um, and through this, ultimately, once we go through this entire process, they're going to be coming up, and they have been doing it right now, um, with action plans and measurement inventories to make sure that as we go through that whole plan, do, study, act process that we're constantly uh, have a feedback loop where we are analyzing what's working, how our students doing, what's not, what processes are in place, what processes are not, and what it is that we really need to do differently in order to get the result that ultimately we're striving for. Uh, next slide. I think that's it, isn't it? Is that the last one? Yeah, I think that's the last slide. So yeah, that's the last slide. We have, we're halfway through the process right now. Um, it's just important for me to be able to articulate that there's a vision, right? And that we're not flying by the seat of our pants, that we're very strategic with what we're doing, but I need every individual to be a change agent. I need them to be accountable in terms of where they see themselves in this process. I know that it's right now, it could be a little messy because it's the first time that we're going through it. But once we go through it this year, then we have a fluid, continuous improvement process that we can just tweak and tighten year in and year out as we move towards moving our district um, towards that standard of excellence that we're all seeking. So um, that's my presentation for tonight. I hope that adds uh, a little um, insight um, to just where we are. And it's not me and Iceland, I'm just a presenter. This is the central office team. This is our principals being facilitators. This is the instructional leaders in their buildings being facilitators. This is each teacher, para, um, and everyone across the board who's just taking ownership uh, in this uh, learning endeavor uh, as we are uh, seeking to get better each and every day. So Madam Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. And that brings closure with my report for tonight. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Scriven, for that report. That was really um, a breadth of information. That's really, really helpful. Um, we'll move on to public comments on agenda items only. If we have participants uh, in the room, the Zoom room, you can raise your hand. You will be unmuted. Please provide your name and where you reside in, in the uh, township. If we have uh, those who are either watching uh, the broadcast or streaming, you can email any comments you have to CSD board meeting comments at sheltonham.org. Mr. Kaufman, are there any hands up in the uh, in the there, Zoom room? Oh. There are no hands raised. Okay. All right, we will move on to our committee reports. And so first up is the Financial Affairs Committee, and I will be providing that report. Give me one second to pull it up. So the Finance Committee uh, meeting was held on January 2nd, 2024. The following agenda items were discussed, the interim financial statements through December 31st, 2023, 
The statements included the balance sheet statement of revenues expenditures and a review of our local tax revenue collection. We also discussed or Mr. Swiger presented the changes in fund balance and we will have a strong finish financial finish for our 2023 school year. Mr. Swiger also provided a state budget update, which included funding for school environmental repairs, public school facility grant program, mental health grants, and targeted safety grants. Criteria for awarding monies have not been communicated to school districts as of yet. However, Mr. Swiger is um, keeping his eyes open for, <laughs> for that criteria so we can apply <clears throat> once it's announced. The full presentation may be found on the district's website homepage by clicking on the presentations tab for financial affairs. Next month's uh, hybrid meeting will be held on Tuesday, February 6th, and that concludes my report. Ms. Mulhar will provide the Educational Affairs Committee update. Thank you, Madam President. The Educational Affairs Committee met on Tuesday, December 19th at 7 p.m. in person and via Zoom. Following roll call and the approval of minutes, we moved on to our agenda. December's topic was the Cheltenham High School course recommendations. CHS Principal Mr. Jimmy DeAndrea and Vice Principal Dr. Ben Hammond presented three courses to be approved for the 2024-2025 academic year. Those courses are as follows, Advanced Placement Seminar, Data Literacy, and Financial Algebra. An Environmental Engineering course will be developed next year for the 2025-26 year. We learned a little about each course, prerequisites, projected staffing, materials needed, and any cost to the district. Um, the Advanced Placement Seminar is a broad AP foundational course that uh, engages students in cross-curricular cross conversations that explore the complexities of academic and real-world topics and issues by analyzing divergent perspectives. Um, through project-based units, students in the data literacy course will be data explorers through active engagement, developing their understanding of data analysis, sampling, correlation, causation, bias, uncertainty, modeling with data, making and evaluating data-based arguments, and the importance of data in society. Uh, financial algebra is a mathematical modeling course that it's algebra-based, applications-oriented, and technology-dependent. And then the environmental engineering course introduces environmental literacy and sustainability with focuses on practices, ecological processes, and systems that comprise the environment, including human social systems and influence. Um, an engineering lab will enable students to engage these issues through a technological and engineering lens. Um, other courses that we discussed that were presented were an academic seminar and, and composition one. They will both be piloted for the 2024 2025 academic year. Uh, lastly, CHS also recommends renaming the computer programming one course to introduction to Java. The renaming clarifies the scope of the course for students and families. Uh, the full presentation can be found on the district's website homepage by clicking on the presentations tab. The recording of the meeting with a deeper discussion and more details on all of the courses um, is also available on the website. Uh, thank you to Mr. DeAndrea and Dr. Hammond for their presentation. I know a lot of work goes into develop the, developing these courses, working with faculty to figure out where their interests lie and how they connect with what students need and are looking for. So we appreciate the work that went into this. Uh, the next Educational Affairs Committee meeting will be in a hybrid format next Tuesday, January 23rd, and will focus on special education. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Mulhern. Mr. Burdell Williams will provide the Eastern Center for Arts and Technology report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The December Eastern Center for Arts and Technology Joint Operating Committee met on Wednesday, December 14th, 2023 in person. Uh, we did not discuss any items that require board approval, but I do have a few key topics um, to provide updates on. Uh, first, uh, first and foremost, uh, the Student of the Month recognition. Uh, Kenneth McKenzie, an Abington Senior High School senior, is the, was the December 2023 student of the month. Uh, Kenneth was recognized for his outstanding work in Eastern's Protective Services Program. 
At Eastern, Kenneth is on the Protective Services Occupational Advisory Committee as a student representative and is the Protective Services Class Lieutenant, which is the highest rank of all of the students in that program. As a junior, he received the Straight A Award at Eastern's Award Night ceremony held in May of 2023. In the community, Kenneth is a volunteer member at Second Alarmers Rescue Squad, a junior, a junior volunteer firefighter at Abington Fire Company, and is in the Recruit Sustainment Program for the Army National Guard. He has already obtained his Firefighter One certification. In February, Kenneth will begin an internship at the Willow Grove Second Alarmers Association and Rescue Squad. After graduation, he plans to attend basic training and advanced individualized training for the Army National Guard, and then plans to attend post-secondary education for a degree in public health or emergency medicine, and to also obtain his paramedic certification. Congratulations to Kenneth. Second update, the Joint Operating Committee did approve the 2023 Key Indicator Data and Placement Reports. Um, this year, new metrics uh, included Eastern's retention versus program retention, regular attendance, and placement based on respondents and placement response percentage. Uh, Cheltenham students reported a 94.6% positive placement, which is the second highest of the sending districts. The overall placement for all graduates was 88.7%, some 10 points higher than the prior year of 78%, and higher than Eastern's annual goal of 84%. Additionally, December was Community Service Month at Eastern. Throughout December, Eastern recognized students who have dedicated their time and energy to our local community. I want to take a moment to recognize Oloni Hameen, who is an exercise science student from Cheltenham High School for their community service efforts. Um, just as a note for the community, uh, those December community service recognitions are posted on Eastern's website, eastech.org, for your review. Just a few more updates. On November 15th through 17th, 2023, a delegation of 36 Eastern Skills USA students and four faculty advisors participated in the Skills USA Leadership Conference at Kalahari Resorts in Pocono Manor, PA. A total of 72 medals were awarded to the Eastern participants, including 55 gold medals, 10 silver medals, and seven bronze medals. More to come on Eastern's progress as the, uh, the progression of Skills USA competitions increases from the state level to the regional level and beyond. Lastly, the Joint Operating Committee appointed uh, several new, new members. Uh, the new members were from Abington, Ms. Elizabeth Eisenhart, from Upper Dublin, Ms. Jennifer Ionetti, and from Springfield, Ms. Eileen Bell. The Joint Operating Committee also voted and appointed their new president and vice president for the 2024 school year. The new president for the first time in 16 years, uh, there's a new president at Eastern, and that is Ms. Carolyn Riley. Uh, of Jenkintown. Uh, Ms. Riley has been on the Joint Operating Committee for 14 years and served as Vice President for the last 10 years. The new Vice President, um, I'm happy to say, is myself, uh, Mr. Charles Burdell Williams from Cheltenham. Um, I've been on the Joint Operating Committee for four years and uh, really encouraged to continue to work and grow and develop the educational experience at the Eastern Center for Arts and Technology alongside the administration and executive director, Dr. Kathleen Plesnarski, along with the Joint Operating Committee. A full brief that covers the fine details or additional details of the JOC meetings can be found on Eastern's website at eastech.org. 
Next month meeting will be held in person on Wednesday, February 14th, 2024 at 8 p.m. via Zoom. The link to that meeting is available via email requests that can be sent um, by uh, looking up the specific information on Eastern's website, eastech.org. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burdell Williams. And again, congratulations on your appointment uh, as vice president. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Ms. Lohman will provide the MCIU report. Thank you, Ms. Henry. The Montgomery County Intermediate Unit Board has not met since our last legislative board meeting. The next meeting of the MCIU Board will be next Wednesday, January 24th at 6.45 p.m. in person and over Zoom. And the meeting held in person will be at the MCIU's main offices at 2 West Lafayette Street in Norristown. This ends my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lohman. Mr. Burdell Williams will provide the facilities report. Back like I never left. Great. So the uh, the facilities committee uh, met on Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024, to kick off the new year with a school board business. Um, the board heard a presentation from the revision architecture firm. Uh, we listened to Scott Kelly and Drew Levine. Uh, discuss some details of what the beginning of a sustainability plan or the implementation of a sustainable, the, sorry, the, um, the, the um, I guess the collab collaboration of, of a, um, a sustainability plan as well as that of our of upcoming facilities capital planning, uh, looking at uh, aspects of our, our school district um, and thinking through uh, some ideas that will help remove barriers and then seek to approach sustainability uh, on a broad spectrum of solutions. Um, there was a significant amount of information shared and uh, without rehashing it, because I will not do the presentation uh, nearly as well as uh, our friends from Revision did, I would like to direct the community to the school district's website where both a video recording and uh, a PDF of the presentation is available. We also heard an update from, um, from Mr. Holman regarding light fixtures that had been installed in the district. Uh, over time, uh, the light fixtures that have been updated to LEDs have, uh, from an energy savings perspective, um, saved about 818 gallons of gas, uh, a number of trees, I believe it was nine trees that were saved, um, and continue, and that continued effort uh, just underscores some of the low-hanging fruit that the administration is continuing to uh, focus on as we begin uh, to pick up steam on our, our journey of sustainability. Um, as mentioned, uh, the full presentation as well as a video recording of the meeting are available on the school district's website. The next meeting of the facilities committee meeting, excuse me, of the facilities committee uh, is scheduled for Tuesday, February 6th at 7 p.m. Uh, that meeting will be uh, held in room 102, but also is available in the hybrid format via Zoom. And we will follow the agenda bill that starts directly before that. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Burdell Williams. The liaison group, uh, Ms. Mulhern, will provide an update. Yes, thank you. The liaison committee has not met since our last legislative meeting. We will meet next Monday, January 22nd at 8 a.m. Thank you, Ms. Mulhern. Uh, next, we will have the policy report provided by Mr. Epps and then followed by the legislative meeting, which Ms. Uh, excuse me, the legislative update, which Mr. Epps will also provide. 
Thank you and good evening uh, to everyone. And uh, it'll be, uh, I think this might be the official, official welcome to Ms. Lohman, to the policy co-chair. So uh, looking forward to working with you uh, in service of our district and governance. Uh, we last met as a policy committee in October. And so I gave a thorough report at our November meeting with the new schedule of policy committee meetings, we will next meet uh, in actually just a couple of weeks, January 30th. However, you will still find uh, six second first read policies that are not subject to vote tonight, but are there as a matter of procedure. And so uh, we will, as I mentioned, we'll next meet on January 30th. And to conclude my report, I'd like to give uh, just a, a public acknowledgement and shout out to our schools this past week and our principals and staff who organized uh, service events. Uh, Monday was uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Recognition Day. And so a part of our quest to advance equity, a lot of that happens in the classrooms, so a part of that is being a community partner. And so I know our schools organize service events to be just that and to give back to uh, our community and, and the surroundings. So thank you to our schools. Thank you to our staff. Thank you to all the families that showed up uh, to, again, advance equity as a community partner uh, through in uh, within our schools. Uh, so that concludes my policy report for tonight. I'm going to continue, as, as Madam President said, to the legislative report. Uh, as uh, may become familiar, uh, I am a representative of the Montgomery County School Board Legislative Committee. Uh, we meet uh, periodically to discuss proposed and adopted legislation and other issues that might require advocacy with our elected officials. And so during each legislative meeting, I share uh, legislative updates on topics that impact public education. Uh, the committee will convene again next month, February 15th, 2024, uh, via Zoom. And so a few updates I have um, all at the state level. Uh, there's some adopted legislation uh, over the last couple of weeks. You heard it earlier today from, uh, from uh, Madam President Henry that our business manager, Mr. Swigert, eloquently reported on the General Assembly and governor's passing uh, school code, another fiscal code uh, that really allowed funds to be dispersed to school districts around the Commonwealth, as you heard, related to facilities, environmental repairs, mental health and school safety. What also was included in those amendments was some funding to provide stipends for student teachers and the teachers that supervise those teachers, something that might uh, impact our district. Uh, I know actually one of my children has a student teacher in, in their class. And so that's something that will certainly uh, incentivize uh, and hopefully encourage folks to enter into the teacher pipeline. And it also has some amendments around extending the limits for how long people can serve as substitute teachers. Uh, and even releasing all limits to, to, to say that um, a person of a certain standing could actually substitute teacher for the entire year. And so those are some, uh, there's, a, there's a plethora of amendments. Again, many of them relate to funding. Some of them, as I mentioned, relate to how schools operate. Uh, but again, those funds will be dispersed throughout the Commonwealth, uh, which is something that has been really, um, uh, districts have been eagerly awaiting when, the, when that code will pass, uh, which, which was on a, a delayed timeline than what we anticipated. We also recognize in a recent educational affairs meeting that our Cheltenham School District is proactive. It's very proactive in implementing courses and offerings that go beyond the state standards and enrich learning opportunities for Cheltenham students. And so we can add financial literacy to that list. Uh, I, I have seen firsthand at Cedarbrook, there's a course uh, around personal financial literacy. And uh, according to a new law in 2026, all schools throughout the Commonwealth need, will need to offer a mandatory personal financial literacy course. And so again, this is another example of where we are sort of ahead of the curve and, and I'm encouraged by the work of the administration, the work of our staff, uh, that we will be in a place to improve our course offerings as opposed to starting it from uh, scratch. There are some uh, 
uh, let, there's some items that have been approved by the House Committee that uh, are not quite yet law, but I thought it might be helpful to share tonight. One pertains to our uh, school director training. Uh, we just heard a little earlier, some of our newer uh, uh, just onboarded folks uh, attended training. We are required to go through training annually as school directors. Uh, many of those are offered through the Pennsylvania School Board Association and the, uh, the General Assembly is considering whether to just give full authority around trainings over to PSBA as opposed through uh, PDE. So that's um, as that's a proposed legislation, again, maybe something that uh, determines how and where we receive our annual training. Uh, most of it uh, happens through PSBA already. So that's something to stay tuned with, as well as AP exam cost reduction. There is um, some, again, approved from the House Committee, uh, a bill that would establish uh, more training and support for teachers. Uh, to teach AP courses and also reimburse for cost, any cost related to taking the exam uh, for students. So that's something that we want to be mindful of. Again, as Mr. Burwell Williams said, what might be considered some low hanging fruit, but also would certainly expand access uh, and, and capacity uh, within the advanced placement uh, course offerings. Last but not least, there's an update on the school funding lawsuit. Uh, the Basic Education Funding Commission released two reports last week that outlined recommendations for how to reform what is the most inequitable education funding system in the nation. Uh, there's one proposal which received enough votes from commission members to become the official position of the commission. That proposal uh, really recommends to in increase funding for public education by $9 billion over the next seven years. That uses a formula that really takes into account student needs, economic hardship faced by the district or community, uh, and some other factors. Overall, the increased funding would address uh, what has been deemed inadequate resources for instruction and also school facility repairs. And so the recommendation, the proposal also includes recommendation and recommendation for um, about $300 million a year over the next seven years dedicated solely to school repairs. And so uh, while uh, there's a lot of information, there's articles, you can actually read the full report through the uh, Education Funding Commission's website. Uh, there is another proposal, right, which did not receive enough votes to become the official position of the commission. Uh, but that proposal does not detail how much funding should be allocated or specific changes to the funding formula. And so as a reminder, the uh, commission was a 15 member group, three members of each legislative caucus and three members of the governor's administration. Their recommendations will be introduced as bills for the General Assembly to consider. The governor will ultimately need to sign it for it to become law. And so right now there's no guarantee that those recommendations, again, nine billion over seven years is really being seen as a down payment, uh, but that's not a guarantee. And so this will, uh, this will be debated and considered uh, throughout the General Assembly. This is budget season. Uh, over the next few weeks, we'll probably hear the, the, the governor's budget address and proposal. And so this is certainly something that uh, will be addressed to some extent uh, throughout this next budget cycle. And so, uh, as I mentioned, you know, really now is the time to share perspectives uh, from the lived experience, students and families, anyone within listening ear, uh, to share your perspective on uh, how schools are funded uh, and what that means at a local level, uh, as well as us as board members and administrators will have opportunities to advocate on behalf of the district throughout the upcoming year, whether that's through PSBA uh, or uh, directly with our representative, Senator Art Haywood and Representative Napoleon Nelson. And so now more than ever, public schools of all types and models have an opportunity to stand together with a united vision for an equitable funding system, uh, which has really been a barrier uh, and really has pit public schools uh, against one another in, in different ways. And so this, this is uh, an opportunity uh, advocates have been building up for the, for the last couple of decades. Uh, and certainly we wanna be mindful to take advantage of uh, the change that is required 
and certainly ensure that uh, the, the reforms uh, place students, families, and their best interest uh, and the lived experience at the heart of those decisions. Uh, so that uh, concludes my legislative report uh, for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Epps. We will now move to the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right. Was it Leah? Was it you that yeah. voted first and Charles the second? Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, before we go on to um, to vote, are there any comments from any board members on any any item that is on the agenda? Mr. Burdell Williams. Just bring being brief. Uh, I know this the list is a little bit shorter than it has been in previous months, but want to show some appreciation to uh, the community members who uh, made efforts to officially become volunteers and present themselves uh, tonight for approval of the board. There's a lot of steps that goes into that process. As a person who is not from Pennsylvania, there's additional steps that's required. So I know. How difficult that may be, but appreciate um, all of what uh, those parents, family members, community members um, are doing to contribute to the educational experience of our children through volunteering. Thank you, Mr. Burdell Williams. Any other comments from other board members? All right, so we will take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed say nay. So the agenda is um, passes. We now will move to public comments on non-agenda items. Again, if you are in the Zoom room, you can raise your hand. And um, when you're unmuted, state your name and where you reside in the district, along with your comment and or question. And for those who may be watching it via stream or broadcast, can submit questions to CSD board meeting comments at Sheltonham.org. There are no hands raised. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. There were no public um, uh, prior public questions. And our future meetings are as listed on the agenda. And I have a motion to adjourn uh, the meeting. So moved, oh. Dr. Redding. Second, Mia Blitzstein. Thank you. All in favor say aye. M Madam Chair. Yes. Just one moment. I know that um, we spoke about this earlier today and that there wasn't a specific um, item on the agenda for it, but um, I do want to recognize uh, Dr. Tara Tamaris, Doc, Dr. Tom Thomas Smith, Dr. Smith, for uh, her recent appointment uh, in the Upper Marion School District. Um, I was able to uh, watch virtually, um, but very proud of your efforts. And at, when the time comes, I'm sure there'll be some appropriate moments to share some additional commentary. But I uh, just wanted to uh, shout you out there um, for the record in this moment in time. Thank you for all that you've done for Cheltenham. Thank you, Mr. Burdell Williams. All right, well, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>